test. I'm going to do a road test. Welcome to the wonderful high-tech world of Element 14. Today we're going to do a road test of a multi-comp bench power supply. But it's not a normal type of road test. A normal type of road test would involve experimentation, testing, and a learning experience. This is more of an educational and mentoring type of presentation where I present a few things that I've learned about power supplies. Hi, I'm Doug and I'm a systems engineer and a member of the Element 14 forum. By day, I design life-saving products in the counter-terrorism and security fields. By night, I dabble in electronics, like many of you. Tonight, I will be doing the special educational road test of this multi-comp power supply which Element 14 has generously provided. So let's get it out of the box and have a look at it. I think power supplies are one of the most used and most important instruments on an electronics bench. Why is that? Well, all electronics need appropriate power and bench power supplies provide the ability to ensure the desired voltage and current are available in as safe a manner as possible. So we have, wow, some leads. And the power cord. Okay, it's a nice little unit rid of all this packing stuff. So we have three sets of outputs. Very nice. So you can see the voltage, uh, winding course, current adjustment and voltage, um, the output on off button, which is crucial to be able to turn them all on at the same time. There's a little light here that indicates whether um, this output is either 3.3 or 5 volts. And that is switched by this switch on the back. So we can, de we can select whether we're using 3.3 or 5 volts here. And there's a power switch, big ground plug, another ground lug, power jack. Nice carrying handle on top. And that's the kind of functionality that you need. So we have three supplies. This one's the variable one. This one is 12 volts. And this one is selectable, either 3.3 or 5 volts. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of testing to show exactly what kind of things this can be used for. Now bench power supplies can be used for testing newly developed circuitry or troubleshooting old circuitry that has that's having problems. And the bench power supply allows you to know exactly what the voltage and current are that you're supplying to your circuit. And you don't need to develop a custom circuit, a custom power supply and troubleshoot that. So you can just use a standard bench power supply without having to worry about whether the power supply is working or not. And a good power supply can protect your circuit. So when you first power it on, you can limit the current to a safe level so that you, you're not going to burn up or blow up your circuit. Many custom power supplies don't have that sort of extra function built in. So it's safer to use a bench power supply when you're first powering up. There are all kinds of other reasons for using a bench power supply. And I'm sure you guys can come up with a million of those. The bottom line is they save time. They prevent damage to circuitry. They perform better and they provide better information than built in power supplies. So that's a general list of reasons why bench power supplies are important and useful. But in this video, I'm going to focus on the three main reasons why I like this particular power supply. So let's hook up some power. Now I do a lot of electronic projects and a lot of them use bench power supplies. But I also do a lot of videos of the projects that I'm working on. So I need a power supply that's good at doing videos. And that's not a normal criteria for a power supply. But this power supply happens to be very good 
at doing videos and I'm going to explain why. Okay, now I roped myself in. Not all power supplies are good at doing videos. So why is this power supply so good at doing videos? Well, the first big reason is it's silent. When you're doing videos, of course, you're recording audio. And if you've got a fan running, it can be very distracting and it certainly reduces the audio quality. If you're doing something that requires high fidelity audio, you don't want a fan running in the background. So this thing doesn't have a fan. And that's great. It's a silent power supply. And that's a very unusual feature for a, for a bench power supply. Many of the, the good ones, the big expensive ones, have to deliver so much power they usually have a fan running. So that's turning it on. You can see it's got a nice LCD display. So the second reason why this power supply is so good for video work is it's small. It's narrow. It doesn't take up a lot of bench space. And when you're trying to fit a lot of your experiment into the, the video frame, um, it's really handy to have a power supply that does not take up a lot of bench space. And because these power outputs are vertical, the, the two are vertically oriented, they can squeeze three power supply outputs into a very thin form factor, which is very useful when you want to zoom in to get all the equipment in good focus and see the detail of your work. So that's number two. It's a nice small power supply and it's got a lot of functionality in a small space. The third big reason is the display. If you see this display, it's a LCD, nice looking, um, fairly low contrast, which is actually very important. Uh, you, you don't want the display to uh, overpower the rest of your apparatus. And you want to be able to do the, the lighting so that the display is visible but not brighter than the rest of your equipment. And the LCD does that. If you see L LEDs, they are usually um, emitting light, which is actually too bright for the camera to handle. And it's uh, they can be fuzzy if they're too bright and it's um, hard to video uh, and get the right lighting level for LED work. And I have some LED displays which I can't videotape, they, or I can't video, they just don't show up properly. Uh, it's very hard to read what's actually on the LEDs. I don't know if the designers were thinking about all this when they made this power supply, but they happened to make a great power supply for doing video of electronic projects. And I'm going to use it a lot because it's exactly what I need. It's a small compact display, it's got a I mean, it's a small compact power supply. It's got that great display and it's silent. It's silent. There's no fan in here at all. Now, I don't want this video to be just a talking head, which is not my strength. So I'm going to try and squeeze in a couple of applications and talk about those. First up, in keeping with the video theme that I've been talking about, my camera, uh, runs off a battery and the battery can run out in the middle of a shoot. So I bought a power supply that can run the camera without the battery. And it has this fancy connector, which actually looks like the battery and it slides in where the battery goes. But the power supply that came with it is so noisy that it actually floods the audio signal in the camera with, with uh, audio noise. So I need a power supply that's quiet, both electrically and with no fan. So this power supply fits that bill. Um, this thing is a 7.2 volt battery. It's tough to find a fixed power supply with 7.2 volts. So until I design one and build one, I can use this power supply to run my camera 
as long as I want with no battery problems. So that's a really neat uh, application which I'm sure I'll use this for sometimes. So another thing that I do is I use um, 5 volts from USB power supplies on a lot of projects. They're ubiquitous. They're little wall warts that supply 5 volts all over the place. But when you're first powering up a circuit using one of these little wall warts uh, is risky. So you would like to use a power supply like this to bring up those little 5 volt power uh, devices. And what I've done to make that possible or easy to do is made this little circuit board which has banana plugs on it and a USB connector. And I can just plug it into any standard um, power supply. Uh, they have a standard spacing for the, the power, the banana plugs. So it just plugs in there and I can have a USB cable plug in directly to the connector. And then I can power my devices. And if I run it from this variable supply, I can check out whether it needs um, a little bit more than five volts or a little bit or how low it can go and still work. So I can adjust the voltage and play around with the circuit to see um, how it performs with different power supply uh, uh, voltages and currents. And one of the things I do, of course, is um, Another factor in all of these power supplies is the cable. Now some cables use very small wires and there's a significant voltage drop in the cable. So one thing I've done is I've made these little circuit boards that short the power supply for the cable so that I can measure whether or not the cable is, um, is having a large voltage drop. So I can sort of set the power supply up to deliver one volt. I can set the current limit at, at one amp and, uh, and then the voltage through the cable will show up on the display as, as a voltage. Let me just do that. Okay. So I'm going to set up the power supply to be. It, any voltage will do, but say, um, let's go to um, 3 volts, just because we don't expect more than 3 volts to drop in the cable. And we'll set the current um, to be exactly 1 amp. Okay, so it's set up to be 1 amp, and I would like it to be on my variable power supply saying it's it's three volts I'm going to turn it off just to plug in this shorting plug and let's just see what happens so I've got this connected to a short I've got this set up for three volts and one amp if I turn it on, we can see that the voltage goes to 0.45 volts and it's, it's supplying one amp. So that means there's 0.45 volts through this cable. It's dropping almost a half a volt with one amp through it. So you wouldn't want to use this cable to power up Raspberry Pi, for example, because it wouldn't like a five, a four and a half volt power supply, which is what would happen if you ran it uh, with just one amp. And a Raspberry Pi can actually take even more than one amp. So this is useful for, for me to, to tell whether these cables are the right cables for the job. Okay, the next application or the last application I want to run through is this semaphore robot, Sammy Semaphore. And he needs five volts to run the computer in here, but the servo motors need at least six volts. So I can do that by running five volts from this output and the servo motors can run off the big uh, variable supply. 
And that's useful because I actually, I'm not sure what the best voltage is to run those servers, servos. They could run from six and a half volts or higher, but we know they need at least six. So this cable is not the one. We're going to use a USB-B cable. Okay, I've hooked up Sammy Semaphore to the 5 volts over here and 6.2 volts on this output for the servos. And I've got my Bluetooth tablet running here and So, great power supply. I can, one power supply does all the functionality that we need for something like this, which requires two power supplies. And this thing does both functions quite nicely. So video blogging is a growing sport, as I'm sure you're aware. And if you want to try your hand at it, maybe some of the ideas presented in this video are worth thinking about when it comes to choosing your own power, bench power supply. So hopefully you'll find some use in this material. It's kind of ironically poetic that this road test requires a video about this power supply and that this power supply just happens to be a great power supply for doing videos. So that's it for this video and we'll catch you later.